on behalf of the university, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to you to this congregation for the conferment of degrees here in our Barony Hall. Today is a very special day in our university calendar. It's a graduation day, which makes it special for our, our, graduate, our graduands who are about to become graduates, for all the family, friends and supporters who are here to see them, and for all of the staff of the university. Now, in a few moments, it will be my privilege to cap each of our graduates as their name is called out. They come up on stage to receive their award. I shall place the graduation cap above their head, thereby symbolically conferring their degree. The capping tradition has its roots in ancient China, and it's recognized as a rite of passage and as a mark of achievement. And for each of our graduates once capped, this also signifies that they are now part of a community of scholars at the University of Strathclyde, which can stretch back over 200 years to the Scottish Enlightenment. At the start of this afternoon's ceremony, we also have the conferment of an honorary degree. And these are awards that are made by the university to recognize the particular contribution that someone has made in their career. Today's recipient is Magnus McFarlane Barrow, the driving force behind Mary's Meals, and we shall hear a little bit about Magnus's contributions in a short while. At the close of graduation, we have a reception in our nearby learning and teaching building, which is about 300 metres up the road to which everyone is invited to come along and partake of some refreshments. We also intend to have an academic procession. It normally depends upon the weather, but I think we'll be okay today. And at the appropriate time, I will invite Strathclyde University's newest graduates to join that academic procession. In the meantime, I do hope that you enjoy the ceremony. And when you see your loved one come up on stage to receive their award, I would strongly encourage you to celebrate, to cheer, to shout, to clap. These occasions do not come around very often, so please feel free and make the most of it. I now formally declare that this congregation for the conferment of degrees is open, and I invite Manish Jossi to present our honorary graduate to receive his award. Thank you. Vice Principal, I have the honor to present to you Mr. Magnus McFarlane Barrow, OBE. Magnus is a Scottish social entrepreneur and the founder and CEO of Mary's Meals, a global charity that provides meals for over 2.4 million of the world's poorest children across 18 countries. The children are fed in their place of learning and the nutritious food attracts children to the classroom where they can gain an education and a route out of poverty. A CNN Hero recipient for his work in 2010, Magnus received an OBE for his services to charity in 2011 and was named one of Time Magazine's 100 most influential people in the world in 2015. He has written two books. His first book, The Shed That Fed a Million Children, made the prestigious Sunday Times bestseller list in the month after its release and has been published in nine languages. A second book, Give, Charity and the Art of Living Generously, was published by HarperCollins in 2020. Magnus leads an incredibly diverse global movement, including people of all faiths and none. He is inspired by his Christian faith and was granted an audience with Pope Francis in 2013, who encouraged him to keep going forward in his mission. Originally a fish farmer in Argyle, Scotland, Magnus and his brother Fergus were so moved by reports on the Bosnian War in 1992 that they took leave from their jobs, loaded a jeep with aid and travelled to Bosnia to distribute it. On their return, they expected to return to work, but donations kept flooding in resulting in Magnus taking a gap year, which he calls the longest gap year ever, because he's never gone back. Each time they returned home, the old shed was once again full of donations. So Magnus drove from Scotland to Bosnia a total of 23 times to deliver supplies. The shed is almost as notorious as Magnus. For context, Dalmali is a small village more than 40 miles away from Oban, and the shed itself is down a single track road. The fact that Mary's meals start from this old shed 
and continues to operate from there is almost unbelievable and would not have happened without Magnus. During a trip to Malawi in 2002, Magnus met with a family who would change not only his own life, but the lives of millions of others. Lying on the floor of a hut was a mother named Emma who was dying of AIDS. Her children were gathered round her and Magnus asked the eldest, Edward, what was it that he hoped for from life? Edward replied, to have enough to eat and be able to go to school one day. Edward, Edward's words inspired a mission to bring hungry children to school by providing Mary's meals. Globally, around 368 million children are fed daily at school. However, only around 20% of children in the developing world are provided school meals. Meanwhile, there are 67 million primary school aged children out of school around the world. And when they don't make it to a classroom, hunger affects their ability to learn. Magnus has made tackling this injustice his mission and works with like-minded people and in partnership with some of the world's poorest communities to ensure that children are well fed and receive an education. A mission that chimes with Strathclyde's motto is a place of useful learning. There are now Mary's Meal Societies across universities and college campuses all around the world. We have a very active Mary's Meal Society here at Strathclyde in the Student Union, and it was actually founded by one of Magnus's sons several years ago. The Society organised regular bake sales, they take sponsored walks and host a load of other fundraising activities. And we're joined here by some of their members today who have had the privilege of lunch with Magnus earlier on um, and got to spend some time with them. The Strathclyde Society has been sponsoring a school in Malawi, near Lumbo, for over three years and has raised thousands of pounds during that time. The Society, much like Magnus, has been decorated with local and national awards over the past number of years, including being invited to speak to Her Royal Highness Princess Anne earlier this year. And they continue to inspire and motivate students to fundraise and connect with projects that take education to some of the most impoverished children and young people around the world. When asked members of the Society about Magnus, they told me, we in the Society are all so inspired by everything Magnus has achieved. I grew up in the same area as where Mary's Meal started, said another. It's incredibly inspiring to see what something so huge and life-changing can come from such a small and rural place. Despite his many accolades and achievements, Magnus remains humble and committed to the vision and mission of Mary's Meals. Through every value he holds, including his belief in education being key to making the world better, Magnus McFarlane Barrow embodies the vision, mission and values of the University of Strathclyde and will, no doubt, continue to do so. It is with great pleasure, therefore, Vice Principal, that with the authority of Senate, I ask you to confer upon Magnus McFarlane Barrow the degree of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa. I create you Doctor of the University Honoris Causa. Many congratulations and welcome to the University. Gentlemen, it, it gives me um, just huge pleasure. Um, I just feel deeply honoured uh, by the University of Strathclyde. Um, this, if, if I'm really honest, this, um, this honour today kind of ramps up my, my long-held feelings of imposter syndrome quite a few notches. Um, as, a, as a salmon farmer um, from Argyle who dropped out of university uh, at 18 years of age. I can't pretend this really was ever one of my expectations. Uh, it wasn't really one of my life goals. But I feel, I feel hugely honored and, and some of my discomfort today is, um, I suppose, alleviated by, by the understanding that I think this honors really for the Mary's Meals family, this amazing 
movement of people all over the world who, who just won't accept that any child in this, in this world of plenty should go a day without food. They won't accept that any child should be deprived of their education because of hunger and poverty. And we've just heard about the amazing example uh, of the Mary's Meals Society here uh, in the University of Strathclyde. They're incredible. They've, they've inspired me so much over the years. Um, as you heard, my, my son uh, founded uh, the society quite a few years ago now, and it's really just gone from strength to strength. And um, they, amongst other things, they fundraise to, to provide Mary's Meals to a whole uh, school in Malawi. Um, hundreds of children's lives are being transformed just simply because they, they know that every day at school they will eat and so they come and those meals enable them to learn. You know, and what, one, of the, one of the wonderful things about getting a bit older now is just to be able to, to see how this simple thing we do, one meal every day, is changing things, not just the immediate things for hungry children, but, but changing things in the long term. Um, another person that, that graduated fairly recently on my mind today uh, is a young woman called Veronica uh, in Malawi. Uh, Veronica was amongst the very first group of 200 children that ever ate Mary's meals back in 2002 uh, in her village in Malawi. She was an orphan. Uh, she was raised by her two older sisters. She'll, she tells us about the fact that sometimes they went for as long as a week at home without eating a meal. And she also tells us that she never, ever would have stepped inside a school if it wasn't for the promise of Mary's meals. It was the meals that took her into the classroom for the first time. And, and in recent times, Veronica graduated uh, with a degree, a degree in education, actually, uh, and is teaching today in a college in Malawi. All, all this work, all these years, would have been worth it just, just for Veronica to see how her life has changed and to see how now she's changing the lives of others. But it's not only Veronica. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of Veronicas out there because of the work of Mary's Meals, because of all the people that support it in so many different ways, like the Mary's Meals Society here, um, all over the world. That's happening. And, and thank God it is, because the need for Mary's Meals is greater than I've ever seen in all the 20 years of doing this work. More hungry children than ever, more children falling out of education because of hunger. So our, our vision that every child in this world might at least eat a meal every day in their place of education, it burns brighter than ever. You know, and those of you already part of this movement, I just encourage you to go on. Those of you who might be new to Mary's Meals, I encourage you to join the movement so we might reach that, that next hungry child waiting. And today, just, just finally, I know, you know so many of you here are, are this is your huge day uh, to finally graduate after all these years of study. You've done it the normal way, not, not the way that I've kind of uh, come up across this degree. And I, first of all, I just salute you for, for grasping that gift you've been offered of an education because the couple of things I thought I might just want to share with you today is, is one is just about that, about how certainly myself, and I think many of us can take the gift of education for granted. You know, and I, I'm full of shame sometimes in the years since spending time in the world's poorest communities, meeting so many young people who would do anything for that opportunity to gain an education. You know, certainly even children of primary school age, even more children who can't go to high school let alone those who aspire to go to university. So many young people around the world desperate for that, and it's beyond their reach. But you've grasped that gift that you've been given and, and worked for this day, and I congratulate you on that. And I suppose just the other thing, as I, as I reflect on my own life, I never lose this sense of surprise. This wasn't my plan. I was never qualified to do this work. And when I think back on myself, as a young person, I was chronically shy. I was lacking in confidence. I would have just laughed if someone had suggested my life would turn out this way and I would be able to do something that would help 
others. And I would just encourage all of you today, because clearly so many of you already appreciate that, the importance of education. You know, I, I believe that the, the battle with hunger actually begins in the classroom, and that's where it will be won. But I, I just encourage you, maybe especially any of you who might be lacking a little bit in confidence, like I, I used to, don't underestimate the difference you can make. You know, I think every single one of us has this opportunity, lots of opportunities, in fact, to make this world better in all sorts of different ways. So we all have the chance to do that. And if, if you want a life of, of meaning, a, a life in which you feel fulfilled, um, if you want a life of adventure, um, I would really encourage you just to think about those opportunities and to step out and to use your gifts and this gift um, that you've been given uh, of, the, of this very special education here at the University of Strathclyde. So thank you very much for this very great honour. Vice Principal, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the, doc for the degree of Doctor of Education, Joanna Margaret Holmes. <laughs> Margaret McCaskill. Charlene Simpson. <laughs> Helen Zhao. <laughs> for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, for Research and Education, Lorian Martinez de Jareta. Nicola Isabel Robertson. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Genealogical, Paleographic and Heraldic Studies, Lucinda Lee Baxter. <laughs> Laura Doyle. Sarah Kristen Dysart. <laughs> Greg Ross Ritchie. <laughs> Susan Gillian Turner. <laughs> In safety and risk management. Andrew Richard Deacon. <laughs> Adil Hamid. <laughs> Doretha Hariono. <laughs> Abet Kotso Mabanga. In Autism, Kiriaki Antonio, <laughs> Nina Eileen Bakshi, <laughs> Sabarna Shirin, <laughs> Memory. Tafirin Naika. In Education Studies, Rita Nkem Abo.
Bridget Osemwere Adida. Bisolo Omatola Ayomede Adideje. Titolo Grace Adiene. Tomiwa Bako Amu. Humu Masali Awudu. Tohib Ayinla Bello. Chimenze. Emily Bruno Chukwu. <laughs> Ruth Ngozi Ejibo. <laughs> Oluwa Damilola Helen Fasuin. <laughs> Basse Basse Godfrey. Rinal Raja Kanoyiva. <laughs> Sarabjit Kaul. <laughs> Patience Chinye Ken Ibuzo. <laughs> Zihan Lee. Zen Liu. <laughs> Humera Makbul. <laughs> Anthony Chukumika Nwoke. <laughs> Ebele Chinazur Nwosu. Nancy Chidema Okolo. <laughs> Priscilla Omoyemi Okolo Umoren. <laughs> Jelly Lat Ajoke Ulankune. <laughs> Abdul Razak. Olawale Ozoktukan. <laughs> Ditha Diane Palaj. <laughs> Patrick Pandialakal Martin. <laughs> Priyanka Prabhakaran. Don Marie Proto. <laughs> Olivia Lauren Ross. <laughs> Lena Sene. <laughs> Nafisa Shaheen. Mansi Shokin. <laughs> Titelayo Fabian Tokode. <laughs> Ching Zhu. <laughs> Maria Zuber. In TESOL and Intercultural Communication, Shafa Ayaz. <laughs> 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 
for the degree of Master of Education in Autism, Alexandra Vlasse. In Early Years Pedagogue, Melinda Gerhardt. Panagiota Vlachake. In Education Studies, Rachel McAllister. Jessica Walker. In Educational Leadership, Roshan Elizabeth Lafferty. Laura Margaret McCormick. <laughs> Laura Ann McGowan. <laughs> In professional practice, Chloe O'Connor. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Childhood Practice, Claire Deborah Brogan. In Education and English, Louise Marshall. In Education and History, Heather Bryson. In Education and Psychology, Mark Stephen Ray. Emma Louise Wright. In Education and Social Policy, Lauren Harkin. In Education and Spanish with International Study, Rebecca Duffin. Ellie Sheridan Carroll. Nula Sarah Gallica. In Education and TESOL, Al Haytham Saeed Saif Al Jawari. Allah Mubarak Hamis Mubarak Al Shiadi. In Humanities and Social Sciences, Claudia Yusebi. Anthony Gray. Jack McCutcheon. Hannah Victoria Muir. Rebecca Mernon. <laughs> Lauren Ann Wotherspoon. <laughs> In primary education, Emma Balfour. <laughs> Jennifer Ballantyne. Richard Beveridge. Christopher Boyle. Kayla Cannon. Jamie Lee Clark. Abby Katie Craig. Lucy Olivia Crawford. <laughs> Cara Tegan Edwards. <laughs> Emma Jane Forsyth. <laughs> Emma 
Victoria Ann Gillis. Harriet Catherine Granger. Lucy Rennie Gray. Amy Gabriela Guevara Rose. Jennifer Catherine Hagen. Kerry Louise Heddle. Erin Henderson. Lee Hutchinson. Ailey Jill Kane. Morgan Kitchen. Chloe McDonald. Katie Rosetta McCall. Yasmin McEwen. Jennifer McGovern. Lewis McLean. Sophie McLean. Nathan Moore. Lainey Muir. Amy Louise Murray. Caitlin Sarah Rose Payton. Hannah Angela Ramsey. Louise Rogers. <laughs> Natalie Martha Rogers. <laughs> Gillian Claire Ross. <laughs> Maya Savage Newell. Federica Scordi. Christy Sine. Jenna Marie Skeen. Katie Norma Stewart. Zoe Hope Tate. Lisa Thompson. Samantha Thompson. Emily Grace Tullett. Amy Elizabeth Wallace. <laughs> Rosanna Watt. <laughs> Danielle Violet Whitefield. <laughs> Shahad Ahmed. <laughs> David. James Allen. <laughs> Zara Borland Anderson. <laughs> Sarah Bradley. <laughs> Megan Bryce. <laughs> Amy Campbell Cameron. Mackenzie Campbell.
Nicola Louise Carlyle. <laughs> Yu Cheng Chen. <laughs> Beth Chisholm. <laughs> Callum Clark. Caitlin Coffey. <laughs> Nicola Cole. <laughs> Lauren Rose Cosgrove. <laughs> Ruth Margaret Dara. Holly Maria Davies. <laughs> Beth Dawson. <laughs> Paige Dennis. <laughs> Carly Doherty. Elaine Rachel Downey. <laughs> Kaylee Duff. <laughs> Lorraine Duncan. <laughs> Sarah Frizzell. Emma Neve Gagan. <laughs> Katrina Maria Glancy. <laughs> Rebecca Granger. <laughs> Shannon Johnston. <laughs> Chloe Kavanagh. Zoe Kelly. <laughs> Jenna Allison Little. <laughs> Kira Martin. <laughs> Tony Catherine McCann. <laughs> Charlene McKechnie. Cara Mitchell. <laughs> Ellen Rhiannon Payton. <laughs> Caitlin Queen. <laughs> Sarfraz Rashid. Louise Ravenscroft. <laughs> Nicola Marion Ritchie. <laughs> Hannah Ross. <laughs> Kirsty Russell. <laughs> Barry Kenning Sands. Kristen Walker Sim. Amber Simpson. Monica Sloan. Jenna Eve Speed. Kirsty Morag Taylor. Olivia Weatherston. <laughs> Talia Webb. <laughs> Sophie Lauren West. <laughs> Evine Bight.
Charlotte Nicolleen Margaret White. <laughs> Chloe Wilkie. Aidan Donaghy. <laughs> Hannah Elizabeth Duddy. <laughs> Kirsty Heaps. <laughs> Robbie Kennedy. <laughs> Robin Hannah McCallum. Hazel Georgia Rhodes. <laughs> Amira Sharif. <laughs> In primary education with international study, Kira Boguku. <laughs> Samuel Nicholas Cook. Sophie Ann Fletcher. <laughs> Hannah McGilvery. Claire Murray. Gemma Lisbeth Tosh. For the degree of Bachelor of Science, in Curricular Studies, Ryan Campbell. <laughs> Ailey Cox. <laughs> Amy Paxton. <laughs> in Education and Curricular Studies with Teaching Qualification in Home Economics, Nicola Jessica Aitken Watson. <laughs> Leslie Ann Aitken. <laughs> Michelle Dominique Bell. <laughs> Carla Ferguson. Graham Gurley. <laughs> Anne Carol McCall. <laughs> Suzanne Eliza Beacom. <laughs> Erin Mary Ide. Heather McCallum. <laughs> Mary Simmons. <laughs> in Education and Curricular Studies with Teaching Qualification in Technical Education, Pierce Howe. Siobhan Marie Ferguson. <laughs> Lucy McEwen. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Primary Education, John Reynolds Cameron. <laughs> Natalie Droy. Laura Jane Pettigrew. Adam Scott Stewart. Eloise Catherine Trainer. In Education and French, Emma Robinson.
Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, and most of all, Strathclyde University's newest graduates. It is my pleasure to once again welcome you to this congregation. Our graduates have been centre stage, and I would like to begin my address by congratulating all of you once again on your academic achievements. Your hard work has paid off, and this has now been formally recognised in front of your families, friends, and the staff who taught and supported you during your time at the university. Let's give our graduates of 2023 a big round of applause. Now, in a short while, you will be asked to join the academic procession as this leaves the Barony Hall, depending upon the weather. The invitation actually symbolises the fact that you are now full members of the academic community of Strathclyde, a worldwide community that numbers nearly 200,000 individuals. You now join such esteemed company as David Livingston, the missionary and the explorer, John Logie Baird, who invented television, Dame Ailish Angelini, Scotland's first female Lord Advocate, Helen Liddell and Baroness Annabel Goldie, leading Scottish politicians, and the entrepreneur and philanthropist Sir Tom Hunter. Now today, we are celebrating your achievements, and we do recognise that the last three and a half years have been particularly challenging, and you have shown great resilience and determination to arrive at this day. When we reflect on the pandemic, this challenged our health systems, it impacted on our economies, and it changed the way in which we worked and the way in which we had to study. This also demonstrated what society can achieve when we work together, and it placed science at the forefront of finding the solutions to the challenges that we face. It was sciences and university that delivered vaccines for the COVID-19 virus in record time, and it is science engineering and education that will help us address other pressing issues such as climate change. As a university community, we are very much aware of our responsibilities to reducing our impact on the planet, which is why we've set a target to reduce our carbon emissions to reach net zero before 2040. Now to our graduates who are celebrating today, each of you will have benefited from the active support of your families, friends and supporters, and academically through your lectures, tutors and supervisors. And for the past half hour or so, their applause has rung in your ears as you each in turn cross the stage to receive your award. I would now like to ask all of our graduates to show their appreciation for all the support that they have received from their families and friends. <laughs> Now your success, and in turn our success as a university, is in no small part due to the efforts of our staff who are delivering our vision as a leading international technological university that is socially progressive. And you can tell a lot about the values of an organisation by looking at its roots. Strathclyde University traces its lineage back to 1796 when Anderson brought it into being, the only Scottish university founded during the Age of Enlightenment and embodying the Enlightenment principles of reason, tolerance and equality. Anderson's belief in useful learning and his commitment to taking knowledge and using this for the greater good is the motivating force which gives Strathclyde University its momentum today. Anderson believed in knowledge for the greater good and education for all, what we would call widening access and participation. Strathclyde University is at the forefront of widening access to higher education by welcoming those with the ability to learn regardless of their personal circumstances. And 20% of our new students each year come from the most challenging areas of the country. Our ethos of useful learning 
continues to be relevant today as we seek new knowledge that we can readily apply to global challenges. We are a research-intensive university determined to make a positive difference to the lives of our students, to society and to the world. Through our groundbreaking research, we are helping to change the world for the better. Through our scientists and engineers, we are leading the development of innovative technologies that will facilitate the transition from fossil fuels to clean, sustainable energy sources, such as wind, solar, geothermal, and hydrogen. We are developing new drugs, along with new manufacturing processes, that will provide cheaper, more efficient treatments in the fight against cancer, kidney disease, and inflammatory disease, whilst also supporting our health service to face the challenges of health and social care in the changing demographics of the 21st century. Through our focus on entrepreneurial education, we are helping students and staff to create new sustainable businesses as well as supporting economic growth. We are growing Scotland's manufacturing capabilities near Glasgow Airport where the National Manufacturing Institute Scotland, hosted by Strathclyde, was opened last week. In the near future, we will be building another innovation centre named in honour of one of our most successful alumni, businessman Dr Charles Huang, who donated £50 million to Strathclyde, an extremely generous gift given in recognition of the role that this university played in his success. £30 million of this gift will be used to enhance the university's technology and innovation zone, allowing more businesses to co-locate with the university and improve productivity, develop world-class talent, research and technology, and accelerate economic growth. The remainder of this gift will enable the creation of two professorial chairs, an international entrepreneurship and an international innovation and business, along with support for research and PhD students. Our globally minded students and staff are working in sustainable development and helping to address some of the inequalities in India, Malawi and the Gambia by establishing clean water supplies, renewable power sources and healthcare facilities. And we understand the value of working in partnership as we extend our global reach with other leading universities including Stanford, New York University, MIT, and the National University of Singapore. As a university, we are continually working to enhance our student experience, investing in our campus, as evidenced by our new learning and teaching building and our students' union. And we are investing in student mental health and wellbeing support services <coughs> and placing our students at the heart of everything that we do. Our progress in these areas has been recognised in recent years and we are the only UK university to win the Times Higher Education University of the Year twice. And in 2023, we received our third Queen's Anniversary Award for our leadership in advanced manufacturing. The UK-wide assessment of research quality amongst the UK's 157 universities and higher education institutions has reported that nearly 90% of Strathclyde's research has been assessed as being world-leading or internationally excellent. And Professor Eileen Kennedy of the School of Education co-led the Measuring Quality and Initial Teacher Education Initiative funded by the Scottish Government. This project highlighted that the, nat the nature of initial teacher education was a process of becoming rather than of being a teacher within which knowledge, understanding and skills develop as these are continually refined over time. Dr Dylan Landy, also of the School of Education, was recently awarded the Dr Corbett Johnson Leaders of the Future Award for exemplary teaching, significant scholarship and active leadership in national level health education programmes. PGR student Arushi Mathers won the prestigious Scottish Graduate School of Social Science Planned Impact Award for a project seeking to dispute caste oppression in India by co-designing early years programme that will develop critical consciousness around caste oppression in schools and communities. 
and the School of Education's outstanding academics continue to make significant contributions to educational improvements in Scotland, the UK and internationally, leading to changes across the early years, school stage, higher education and professional development of teachers. This includes the use of technology in early years supported by the Economic and Social Research Council, addressing educational inequalities in school attendance supported by the Nuffield Foundation Charitable Trust, and in improving the quality and in initial teacher education funded by the Scottish Government. The school is about to launch the teaching qualifications in further education again as a new provider, consolidating growth relationships with colleges and with the City of Glasgow College in particular. These relationships have led to the sector and development of alternative access routes to initial teacher education, with direct entry to teacher education for HND graduates, where there is a shortage of teachers. Now, these are just some of the many achievements being made by our staff and our students in the School of Education. And Strathclyde is being increasingly recognised as a place where things happen and this is why our graduates are so highly prized by companies and organisations who are looking to recruit the best talent to drive their businesses forward. Our success is in no small part due to the collective efforts, talent and commitment of our staff, the 4,000 colleagues who deliver our vision as a leading international technological university. And like me, they are very proud of your achievements. All of our students learn how to be innovative, enterprising and creative and they can make a real difference when they go out and to the workplace. So go forth with confidence, with purpose and with the knowledge that you are capable of great things. And wherever your career takes you, always remember that as a Strathclyde graduate, useful learning carries with it responsibilities that go beyond academic scholarship. And finally, let me offer my sincerest congratulations to you all once again on your achievements and I hope that you enjoy the remainder of what is a very special day. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's has now completed the formal part of this afternoon's graduation ceremony, which I hope you have enjoyed and that you'll take away very many happy memories of a, of a wonderful event. Um, I would remind you that we do have a reception in our nearby learning and teaching building and the weather has stayed pleasant enough that we will have an academic procession and Strathclyde University's newest graduates will be asked to join that academic procession. So ladies and gentlemen, if I could ask you to remain in the hall till the academic procession passes and then immediately follow the procession up to the learning and teaching building, we shall see you there for some refreshments. I now formally declare that this congregation for the conferment of degrees is closed. <laughs>